Hey, welcome, welcome back. It's Sarah from Roadworthy. I thought I would do another monthly wrap up. Um, so this is my February reading, um, mostly because I had a great reading month. I read 12 books and five of them were five star rates. Um, so I feel like I am on a roll picking books that really appealed to me. So I'm super excited. Um, but when I look at my five star reads, I read two nonfiction and both of them were five star reads. So my nonfiction reading is really driving this statistic. So let me hop, hop to it. Um, so the first book, so first up is Disturbing the Peace by Richard Yates. Um, this is, um, a book of, published in, in 1975, um, about John Wilder. And he is um, this, you know, white middle-aged man who's sort of this everyman. Um, and it's the story of his descent into mental illness. He is, you know, terrible father, you know, philandering husband, alcoholic, just obnoxious. Um, and, you know, Yates just writes in this very matter of fact, blunt style that passes no judgment on Wilder's behavior. And, you know, at the end of the book, I was left wondering, is he just a jerk? And he, he you know, and there's no connection to his mental illness or his alcoholism and self-absorption and, and, you know, his, his other sort of characteristics are those all sort of symptoms that are, are, are leading up to his mental collapse. So this, uh, Richard Yates wrote Revolutionary Road, um, which I loved and thought was great. Um, and that's what inspired this read. And I thought this as well was a five-star read. Um, so I will definitely seek out more of Yeats's books. Um, then I read uh, Push Out, The Criminalization of Black Girls in Schools. And this by Monique W. Morris. And this was a nonfiction book exploring exactly what, what it says on the tin. It's looking at a sort of increased zero tolerance policies, increased um, exclusionary discipline, um, dress codes, um, an increased sort of punitive environment in schools. And what is the impact um, specifically to black girls. Um, this is a little getting close to academic in tone, but it's liberally uh, peppered with interview snippets from girls. And some of these girls, you know, just in their everyday speech, just hit the nail on the head and exactly um, illustrate exactly the points that Morris was making. Um, I thought this book was amazing. And this is like five star plus. <laughs> you know, this is fantastic. Um, so then I read um, Cat Brushing by Jane Campbell. And this is a short story collection. Jane Campbell is an older British writer. And this is a collection of stories about older women. Um, you know, 
sometimes in retirement homes or, um, you know, sometimes not, but, but, you know, older women who, uh, you know, are, are oftentimes sort of being infantilized, um, by their children and sort of larger culture. And, and these stories really challenge that and really challenge the sweet little old lady stereotype that we have. Um, so there is a lot about sexuality, um, you know, older women being just as petty and horrible as, you know, the rest of us. <laughs> um, I thought this collection was really great and a lot of fun. And I really, really uh, enjoyed it a lot. Um, I then went, I read, listened to um, Breaking and Entering by Don Gilmore. And this is for the Republic of Consciousness long list. I loved this book. This is a very personal five-star book. Um, this is about a 50-ish year old um, white narrator um, who, you know, sort of has everything happening. You know, her son is in college and she doesn't feel like she knows him at all. Her relationship with her husband is like, you know, clearly not good. Um, she finds her friends annoying, uh, you know, and then her sister lives far away, uh, but she is taking the brunt of caring for her aging mother who has um, some dementia. So she's got all of these pressures on her and then she uh, joins a lock picking club um, and and things go from there. Um, I, again, I loved it. There were just uh, so many things about Beatrice that I personally could connect to and relate to. Um, I, you know, it had like the right level of humor, you know, like this book, again, very personal five star for me. I do recognize that a lot of the other folks are reading the Republic of Consciousness Prize long list with Sarah from Eyes on Andy. I do not feel the same way about this as I do, which is totally understandable. I do not think this book is going to be long listed, but or short listed, but I loved it. <laughs> um, another five star nonfiction read for me was American Precariat Parables of Exclusion. Um, and this is an essay collection edited. Scene change. <laughs> Sorry. Um, my light died. <laughs> I, it, it's battery does not last very long. I'm going to have to, um, yeah, figure this out. Anyway, my next read, another five-star nonfiction read, was American Precariat, Parables of Exclusion. And this was a um, essay collection uh, edited by Zeke Caligari and several other co-editors um, who are all part of the Minnesota Prisoners Prison Writers Workshop. Um, so, um, these are all essays from different writers talking about precarity in some, in some ways, homeless, um, being transgender, uh, the impact of climate change, student debt, um, mental illness, all of these situations where that, that just make them vulnerable. Um, 
and I, I, I thought the essay collection was great. I enjoyed many of the essays, particularly those essays where the writers were speaking about their own personal precarious circumstances. Um, not all of the writers are incarcerated. Um, and the cool thing that was in this book too is there would be the essay and then after the essay there would be um, snippets of, of dialogue between the editors the um, and very often they they would start talking about the essay but that would lead to some other discussion um, and I really enjoyed reading the, the transcripts of those conversations as well. So again, this was another just amazing, amazing book. Um, so then I read The Bridesman by Savion Lebrecht, and this is translated from the Hebrew by Gila Khan Hoffman. Um, and this is a novella in two halves. Um, so you have uh, nine-year-old Micah in the first half discussing or describing uh, his family meeting um, uh, Adela who is going to, who's 18 at the time and she's being considered as a bride for his uncle Moshe, who's in his late 30s. Um, Adela and, and Moshe are both disabled. Um, and it's this very traditional, patriarchal Jewish family living in Tel Aviv. Um, so the first half is how Adela sort of takes on the patriarch of this family to marry Uncle Moshe. And then um, Micah, our, our narrator, uh, when he's 15, he moves to LA with his, his family. And then the part two of this book, Micah receives um, an invite from his aunt Adela to come back and visit. Um, and he's in his late 30s, early 40s at this time, and hasn't really spoken to her since he left. Um, and so, of course, family secrets come out. Um, I love a book with family secrets. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's sort of, uh, even though he thought he sort of knew the facts of what happened, when he hears her tell the story and hears her perspective, it sort of changes how he feels. It was super page turnery. Um, and again, it's a novella. So it, I think it was maybe 150 pages. Um, so, I, you know, I thought this was a, a, a great um, option for Shorty September. Um, then I listened to Mercury Pictures Presents by Anthony Mara. I love Anthony Mara. Um, A Constellation of Vital Phenomenon is one of my favorite books. Um, and I heard very mixed things about this book. So I, I haven't picked it up. And it's, and I, I finally decided, you know what, I'm gonna pick it up. And it's definitely not as good as A Constellation of Vital Phenomenon. <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Um, it is about uh, Maria, and she is an Italian immigrant. Um, in, this is in the 40s, um, and she is working in at Mercury Pictures as an associate producer, and she works for Artie Feldman, who is a uh, Polish Jewish immigrant. Um, and there's other various immigrants um, who are employed at Mercury Pictures. So there's German immigrants, Polish, other Italian, you know. Um, and you get her story, 
um, and you get sort of the backstory of other characters. Um, and as the war goes on, sort of what happens to their families. Um, and you, you also have sort of the irony of all of these characters making propaganda films for the United States military. Um, and, it, you know, the irony being that all of these people are, are also um, themselves having their civil rights uh, stripped. So, um, you know, they're, they're making these movies about how great America is. Um, and yet, you know, they have friends going to internment camps. They themselves are subject to the alien, you know, alien enemy act. Alien enemy act. Um, so, and then you have for Maria, uh, the fact that she's female uh, in a, in this male industry um, and and the struggle that that is for her. The, Mara's humor is fantastic. I love his humor. I love his dialogue. It's like witty, snappy, almost um, yeah, yeah, there's almost like this slapsticky quality to it. Um, but I love his, I love it, but, but it doesn't, it doesn't have the emotional impact, um, that his earlier books do. Um, but you know, I was entertained. I enjoyed it, but definitely not his strongest. Um, and then for uh, The Republic of Consciousness, a long list, I read Landscapes by Christine Lai. Loved this book. Another five star for me. This is about, um, you know, art with a capital A, art with a little a. This is our main character. I'm kind of blanking on her name. Penelope. She is an art historian. And she works in this old British mansion uh, that's crumbling to the ground as an archivist. And she, um, they're, it, and they're, they're preparing the house to be destroyed. There is this, a little bit of a climate change novel in that they kind of have this sanctuary at this house where various people can come and stay. Um, you know, food is a challenge, water is a challenge. Sort of why the house is falling apart is because they can't really afford to repair anything. Um, but there's a lot in here about what is deemed art, um, what's worth preserving and archiving, there's a lot about um, patriarchy in art. Um, you know, who owns art class? Who owns art and why? And what does that art say about them? Um, I don't typically enjoy books about art. Novels, I should say, you know, uh, but this really worked for me. Um, not only does she have sort of 2D art, but architecture comes in there, um, music, literature. So she's talking about art in a in a in a broader sense. Um, I anyway, I I really really liked this book, and I I suspect that this will be shortlisted. Um. Then I read um, Queen of Dirt Island by Danelle Ryan. This is um, three generations of an Irish farming family. And, uh, you know, they all live together. And these women, you know, it's, 
you know, how they care for each other, love each other, um, you know, even though the neighbors can hear them screaming at each other, kind of a thing. Um, but it, you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, the family history, the backstories of everybody in the family, um, it's changing times in Ireland. Um, you know, you can, you can see as time goes by, sort of mores changing. Um, it, you know, the dialogue is great. His characters are great. This is, for me, this is just like a warm, cozy historical fiction. Loved it. The Sorrow of Others by Ada Zhang. Boy, you can hardly see this cover, but this is on the long list for the Republic of Consciousness Prize. Um, this is a short story collection, a lot about immigrants. Um, many of the older generation in this book are immigrants or have a, a, a continued connection with China. Um, and so there's a lot in here about you know, the fact that they're immigrants and let's say their children aren't, that that automatically creates distance and makes it hard for them to connect. Um, so there's a lot about that loneliness, duty, um, yeah, I, it, it was okay. I don't think this is going to get shortlisted. The first story I thought was amazing. Really loved that. Um, and some of her sentences are incredible. But I found this kind of uneven. And then I had a buddy read with Priscilla from Evening Reader and Roz of Scally Dandling about the books. Um, we finished A Singapore Grip by J.G. Farrell. This is the third book in his Empires trilogy, uh, which is um, a books about uh, the British Empire. Um, this book started off a little slow, but ended up with a bang. Um, this is about the Blackett family who is uh, a merchant family, you know, largely, um, you know, import exporters, um, uh, exporting rubber largely back to Britain. And this takes place in uh, the lead up to World War II. And then it goes into World War II with the Japanese invasion of the Malay Peninsula. And uh, the book ends with um, uh, the Japanese invasion of Singapore itself. So you see sort of what happens to the Blackett family as well as this other sort of large cast of characters, largely European cast of characters, um, as, uh, as the war progresses. Um, very much a satire, um, but I think I appreciated his, his descriptions of the war scenes themselves. So again, the bombing of Singapore, the bombing of Penang, um, the uh, couple of characters end up as volunteer firemen. Um, the, the firefighting descriptions, like his realist scenes are incredible. Um, you know, you just, you feel like you're there. Um, and then I thought the ending was just, the last probably third of this book is just page turnery and fantastic. So 
Uh, this started off a little like, I don't know, but it ended up being just fantastic. And it was, it was fun to read this with Roz and Priscilla. And so last thing I picked up was Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower. And this is about Lauren, who is a teenager. Um, she has hyper empathy. So she's able to feel the pain of other people. And it's, it, it actually starts in 2024 um, in, with basically the, the breakdown of society due to climate change. Um, so food is very much an issue, fresh water, there's no, you know, police, fire, medical services. Um, and Lauren and her family live in this walled community to protect themselves from people who want to break in and steal from their gardens, steal their houses, you know, steal clothes, steal tools, steal whatever. Um, so... Lauren eventually uh, ends up on the road traveling north. So many people are trying to uh, escape into Oregon or Washington because there's rumors that there is uh, fresh water, that food is more available and jobs are more plentiful. So she's trying to go from LA up to Oregon. And the other part is that in here, she's the daughter of a Baptist preacher, but she starts to have different ideas about God and the nature of God. Um, and so she starts to write her ideas down and, and um, essentially she starts to create this alternative religion. So this wasn't super successful for me. And I think that might be because this is book one of, in a series. And so, although I loved the, you know, Butler does a great job at world building and I loved the coming of age aspect and the quest aspect, you know, fleeing her home and trying to get to safety. Um, you know, with this band of characters, the her musings on earth seed, her religion, and the the hyper empathy pieces to me those were very distracting and it didn't feel like they did a lot for this book. Um, so I feel like those are parts that are in here to set up subsequent books. So I just don't feel like this book really worked as a, as a standalone novel. So those are all the things that I read in February. So it, it started off super strong. Um, and I, you know, I read some great things. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm super pleased with how the month went. It's great. So looking forward to March and some more, let's, I'm like hoping for more. <laughs> greedy. We're very greedy as, as readers, aren't we? <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching and, um, chat with you next week.